Hi, thank you for tuning in to Dynamic Art LLC. I'm your host, Daniel Butler, and today's episode is dedicated to creating a banner. We're gonna show you how to design it, and we're gonna go all the way through the print process. Stay tuned. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today we're gonna do that full color banner. And uh, there are two different types of banners that we do, uh, full color printing ones, and then the ones that are due uh, are done with uh, just vinyl and solid colors and uh, they really have uh, two different methods and approaches to going about them but this one right here is going to be a full color uh, graphic pho photography mixed with it uh, banner and um, let's just get right into it so the first thing I want to do is I want to show you uh, all the different things that we're going to use to make this banner um, so I've already edited these uh, just to save one time and uh, this particular banner is a birthday banner it's a 20 inch by 4 foot banner so not a very big banner and uh, even though we're doing it on indoor outdoor material this is going to be for indoor uh, so with that in mind uh, the things that we were asked to keep in mind was uh, that this particular woman is a diva and they wanted to use pink as her primary color uh, mixed with some different things like lips and things that go with lips so we decided to uh, make a little compilation of that in the pictures that they provided so uh, the first edited photograph we have here is going to be our primary picture uh, and as you can see uh, it's a nice clear headshot and I've edited around it I didn't do anything major to it I did blend out uh, a section of it here in the corner and uh, we're gonna, that's going to play a little bit more once we drop it into our primary and let's go to our picture number two uh, this particular picture right here was at an odd angle and as you can see right here the head kind of looked distorted so we're going to kind of uh, angle this in a different position to kind of get her to look like she's sitting upright uh, when we put it into our primary uh, banner here and our last picture is a picture of her standing and because they wanted this picture so much uh, I had to work with it but I honestly did not like this little uh, statue or sculpture or vase or whatever we have right here in the middle that was blocking one of her legs so I had to be creative in how I was going to uh, make sure that that did not uh, hinder what I wanted to do in the initial project and then uh, we had a couple things here uh, some lip prints and uh, the thing about uh, the lip prints that we have here uh, I did take this lip print design offline but I do alter it in uh, Photoshop to make it my own uh, same with this lipstick here uh, I found a picture of lips or lipstick that I liked and I edited uh, all the graphics off of it and I went ahead and just changed it in the filters uh, to have more of a artistic style uh, to go with this banner all right so now that we have seen um, the items that we're going to use for this banner let's go ahead and switch over to the banner and I'll move that off real quick um, this is our canvas and our canvas is like I said 20 inches by 4 feet uh, that's what we wanted to produce this in and the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go ahead and add uh, a like pixie type dust pink sprayed in here and so what I did is I dropped a filler color uh, of pink in there and then I started to erase around the edges and just add a texture uh, eraser all through it to kind of give it a pixelized pixie I wanted like a little fairy type uh, background of pink and uh, if we zoom in you'll kind of see these little star patterns that uh, this particular design makes here and it's you know real fuzzy but that's not what we're uh, you know basically concentrating on this is just our backdrop here and so we're gonna bring in our, our dominant picture which was our main focus picture and 
Bam. Now, a couple things to note here. Um, I wanted to blend out the edges for a couple different reasons. I wanted it to fade out because we're going to have some other things going on uh, in front and behind. And so I didn't want to have a hard edge of where the shoulder would be. And so I just took an eraser brush and just slightly erased around it till we got uh, a softer feel where the edges would be. And then from there, uh, I, I added our second picture of this lady in. And as you can see here, um, it looked kind of weird. It was just kind of like she was floating there. And what I realized that I needed to do in order to make this look right was one, I did change the angle so that she's slightly leaning back, kind of like she's leaning on her own shoulder. And I added a shadow beneath her. And as you can see, once I added the shadow beneath her, it kind of gave her you know, this effect that she's sitting on that shoulder versus floating somewhere above it or in the air. And it just kind of just grounded the actual graphic itself. For our third picture of the lady, uh, I mentioned that I didn't like uh, the thing that was in front of her leg. And what I did was I kind of placed her behind herself here. And so we'll bring that in and move this over. And as you can see there, uh, we still got her standing up, but I was able to disguise the part of the drawing that, or the, the graphic or the photograph that I didn't like. And so, um, as you can see, we, we were able to move all three pictures in and have a relatively good setup between the three pictures that we used. Uh, next, um, I had to think about the text. Uh, and one of the things about you know when you do a banner is you want to create a good balance and I wanted the text to kind of sit in the middle I didn't want it to hang off on the end so I had to come up with something that was gonna look right on the other end to balance it out so that we had what I would call even distribution of weight when you look at the actual banner and so what I decided to do is I decided to use our lipstick here and as you can see here there is our lipstick and then I also decided to add some lips and as you can see we'll add that in there and as you can see this is just kind of like one of those things that's in the background and from there I decided that we would go ahead and we would add our main font which would be our happy birthday because this is a birthday banner and I made sure that it was bold, so I used the impact lettering style. And the one thing you want to keep, think about when you do banners is anytime you want something to be visible, you want the weight of the font to be bold and you want it to be very legible. Um, a lot of times we get carried away with very extreme fancy fonts. And the thing about it is if it's on a banner or a sign, people can't read it. And that defeats the whole purpose, especially if they're driving by or if they're glancing at it, if they can't read what it is, they just keep moving on. And so uh, you have to think about what kind of want, uh, uh, fonts that you're gonna use in order to uh, convey a message that is legible for people who are gonna be reading it. And uh, I had to keep the same thing in mind when it went for her primary name. And as we put this in here, uh, even though uh, they wanted me to keep it as a uh, um, diva-like as possible, I still had to make sure that this font was very clear and easy to read. And one of the things that I decided to do to make her name stand out is I added a drop shadow along with that stroke around the lettering. Uh, and that just kind of makes it pop out just a little bit more. And as you can see, this is our total banner. This is what we're going to go ahead and go over and start printing. And so the next part of this is going to go into us loading material and printing and then how we uh, go into the next parts of getting our banner finished up but uh, as you can see this is our complete banner it has even font weight uh, with the lettering and then it also is distributed pretty uh, evenly as far as graphics on each side so that it it holds a nice look and it still gives that diva feel but at the same time uh, it's not too complicated and that's what you really want when you're doing uh, banner work or any material that has to be uh, seen legibly. You want to make sure that it, it still conveys that message, but at the same time, people can read it. 
All right, so let's go ahead and move over and we will start to knock the rest of this banner out. All right, what I'm gonna load inside of our machine is uh, a banner material, 13 ounce, single side. Uh, it meets the fire uh, code, uh, the NFPA 701 uh, requirements. Uh, it's a durable banner, indoor, outdoor banner. And uh, it prints very well. Setting wise, I typically leave it on regular vinyl settings for uh, printing with the uh, Roland BN20. Now that our banner is complete, uh, and as you can see, it, the quality looks real excellent here. We're gonna take the banner and we're going to fold it over and we're going to pinch the top and bottom of where we have it folded. And what this does is this becomes a marker for where our garments are gonna go. Uh, and this is used in the small banners as well as the big banners. Now we're only doing four garments, but it's key that I'm, I line up uh, both ends uh, accurately. That way when they hang it up, it doesn't tilt. And uh, I'm gonna show you the garments here. As you can see, top and bottom garments, what they look like. Now on this particular uh, garment press, which I did order off of eBay, um, I did have to flip this banner over in order to get the garments where I want them at. So it's important that you understand where you want to mark your actual uh, garment holes at. And that's one reason why I do the fold in the middle because I'm doing the press on this, what I would consider backwards where I can't see the actual graphic. And you don't want to put a hole in a part of your graphic that you don't want to see. So you always want to account for that and make sure that you're putting in uh, garment holes where uh, they don't distort your image or throw something off or have text where uh, a garment is going through it. And so um, by pinching it, it, it'll help you line up what you need. Now, uh, when you buy your garment press, I would stress that you search uh, not only eBay, but other uh, options just because uh, when I was first looking for a garment press, uh, I was finding extreme prices from 300 all the way down to 100. And uh, I went on eBay and I found one for about 50 bucks. And uh, I mean, it works extremely well. You apply the pressure, it punches the hole, presses the garment in, and uh, as you can see, you get a good look. Uh, just push out the little centerpiece, and I mean, that's all she wrote. Good quality garment uh, press, and like I said, it, it cost me under 100 bucks to get. Um, the other thing too is um, you, you wanna find something that still has some quality, has some weight to it. Uh, I did mount it to a wooden board, which I did uh, paint to, to match the color of my garment press, and um, you know, it's just, it helps for balance because when you get them, they're going to be a little off as far as balance would go. And you just want to drill them into something that's nice and flat and able to uh, help you in the process of uh, pressing that um, garment through the actual banner material. Now we're going to flip our banner back over and now that we have our two garment holes punched on either end, uh, we're going to use where we use that pinch mark in order to mark uh, the banner so we know it's moving halfway uh, back across and it's lining up. We're going to 
use that pinch mark to line everything back up and then you're going to feel where your garment is and you're going to use a marker and you're just going to mark the center of that and what that does is that allows you to uh, get an accurate gauge of where that garment needs to be placed in order for everything to stay centered when they uh, uh, want to hang the banner up and so we use a marker to do that and then I'm going to take that rivet and I'm just going to put it over uh, that that dot where I see it in the center and I'm going to punch it through that way that way I know everything stays lined up and it's just the easier way to keep an, an accurate uh, alignment of um, your banner garments Hi, welcome back. As you can see, we're done with our banner, and so now it's time to talk a little bit of business. Uh, one of the things that you wanna keep in mind when doing banners, pricing is gonna depend on the area you're in. Even though there are some industry standards and you can buy books that will give you references to how much you should charge for design fees and how much you should charge for printing certain sizes, uh, you have to keep in mind that if you're in a competitive market, that price is gonna be driven down. Uh, but the advantage of uh, printing a full color banner versus a single color is that you can produce these banners a lot faster and uh, you can do it a lot cheaper because of that. Now, uh, single color banners, we'll do a different episode on that, but for this particular one, it was full color. And for that particular banner, which was a 20 inch by four foot banner, uh, we only charged $25 for us to do that particular banner. Now, keep in mind, it's going to change all across the board. So no matter what part of the, the United States you're in, uh, your price could go up higher or it could even be maybe $5 cheaper, just depending on who's printing it, how big they are, and if they have the ability to uh, produce at a fast rate. So keep those things in mind. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks. Please subscribe so that we can blow up this channel. Have a good day.